Hello, hello. This is going to be the unboxing and initial swatching of the Cotman watercolor set of 12. These are their half pan set. It's a great palette. It's got it's just a, a good split primary palette and a great place to get started. So if you haven't tried watercolor yet, this is a good place to start. Are you ready to get going? Let's check it out. Uh, uh, list of classes that I have in one of my playlists um, there will be 15 lessons for the first part uh, beginning watercolor and I've already got one of them up at the time I'm filming this probably two will be up by the time you're watching it um, this is what I recommend to purchase is this Cotman watercolor set so I have used these before I really like them but I wanted to swatch them out here for you in case you've never done this before and don't even know where to begin with watercolor so this is how it comes packaged. I got mine from Amazon because the price is really good right now. Uh, it's a customizable travel tin, which means you can add more half pans to it or take out what you don't like. Um, 12 paints. Here are the colors you, uh, that it comes with. Lemon yellow hue, cadmium yellow hue, so that's your cool and your warm. Cadmium red hue, which is warm. Alizarin crimson, crimson hue, which is a cool, ultramarine blue, a warm, Prussian blue, a cool, viridian hue, a cool green, sap green, a warm green, and then you have your earth tones of burnt sienna, burnt umber, and then they always include a lamp black and a Chinese white. I rarely use those colors, but when you're first starting out, I, I recommend having them in a, in a palette that you get because it's just fun to play with the paints and see what you can do. You can darken these pigments by um, darkening them in value by adding just a touch of lamp black, or you can push them into the pastel range by adding a touch of Chinese white. So these aren't bad paints to have, they're just not, uh, not commonly used. They are made with quality fine art pigments for color permanence, which means they have a good light fast rating. Uh, Winsor & Cotman is one of the premier companies in watercolor. And I was pretty excited to see, I didn't realize, the tin is white. Most of my watercolor tins are black, so I really like this one because I'll be able to see it right away. When you get a watercolor tin, you'll see that it has this ring in the back, typically, which is to hold it in case you are uh, standing or uh, working in plein air, something like that. It also came with this little brochure here which will give you more information about the paints themselves. A few little tips on watercolor and uh, a fuller list of available pigments. This is this might be the entire Cotman line. In fact, I think it is. Uh, let's see here. They talk about their properties, the staining, granulation, um, opacity. There's all these kinds of things down here when you when you look. So when you're starting with a watercolor, you have all these colors. So this first one, Lemon yellow hue A is their code for permanent. That is their, their light fast code. They're either rated extremely permanent, which is AA or permanent A. That doesn't conform to any other uh, traditional test of, of light fastness. They usually use a blue wool scale or some other method, but this one has its own uh, unique um, test. So let's see here. Back to this. It is transparent and permanent. So that means you'll get some fading over time. Typically that takes years and years and years to get to that phase. Let's see if we can find one uh, that granulates. Is typically the ultramarine blue is always a good one. Yes, and you'll see a little G there. That means it granulates, which is uh, the pigments will separate into the paper. They'll, they'll sink the heavier pigments. And so you'll get a, a nice granular look when you're done painting. All right, so let me set that aside. We'll go back to the tin. It's very well made, very well made, uh, very strong. You have four mixing wells here and uh, five mixing wells here. And with every time you buy a watercolor palette, this center part of the tin will lift out. You just bend these prongs in and then it lifts out and you have more mixing wells here. So let's see, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
This one's a little hard to use. So you've got 16 mixing wells. Um, you have a place that will hold a brush or two, which is great for when you're on the road. And you can fit in 12 more half pans here. Half pans are available to purchase just about everywhere. Let me just uh, bend that out a little bit so that it stays in better. Okay, when you get your watercolor pans, they're all gonna be packaged like this, typically. You have the, the paint label, the wrapper, and I like to save these. You see how it's got this little arrow here? That is how I like to peel them off as carefully as I can because sometimes, yes, it also takes the plastic off too, which makes it super convenient. And then you have your paint in here. Now don't let this alarm you. That is fairly normal with watercolor. Um, there is always some shrinkage after it's been filled. So let's see here, um, lemon yellow hue. So you have the name of the paint on the side here, so that's good to know. Um, if you are curious and wanted to write down the pigment information, of which yellow pigment this is. It is here, PY175. So I like to save these. I'll show you how I set up my, my swatch. I don't, I don't save the little pieces of plastic. Let's pop that back in, and then to make it tighter, you just can bend that in and then pop it right in. So let me just get my, my uh, swatch card measured up here. Eight and a half by two and a half, that'll be good. Make sure it's a fit, yes. And then I just have this corner rounder and I do like to uh, clip off the corner so that it fits in there nicely. You don't have to do this part, of course. You don't have to do any of this. You don't have to swatch them. I just like to have the reference. And when I'm unboxing, I like to show you guys how the colors pan out. Uh, let's see, let's use a permanent marker. Use the top half to glue these on. And the parts that I'm gonna save is this much. Put that there and then I will trim that off later. So let me get this all set up and I'll be right back. All right, we've got that all set up. Let me get rid of this uh, pile of refuse over here. Very little waste. Uh, these boxes can always be saved and reused. You can keep your palette in it, and uh, this information that comes with it is also good to hang on to as well. So very little waste in the packaging. Uh, I know that's important to a lot of people. Uh, let's see here, whoops, I folded that wrong. There we go. Now the reason I like to do this is because sometime on your watercolor journey, you might be very interested to learn about the pigment information or um, sometimes, it's not often, but sometimes companies will need to reformulate their, their pigmentation. So for instance, um, the ultramarine blue is a PB29, which is typically what you'll find across the board. They won't all look the same, however, because of the way the, the formulation is made. Um, so it's just good to have this pigment information as you learn more about watercolor. And then I'm just going to trim this off here. Now, I mentioned before about the loose pigments in the, in the pan. Don't worry about that. But one thing you don't want to do is put glue in there. So I'm just going to take, I've got a pipette of water. You can use a paintbrush. And I'm just going to put a drop of water underneath here and put the paint back in. And then that will help to adhere it back together. All right, now I'm gonna go through with that same pipette and just put a drop of water on each one to prime it. You can use a spray bottle. All right, now let's go ahead and get these swatched out. I'll just lay this, uh, there we go. All right, and in order to make these swatches, I'm going to use a uh, Princeton Neptune round number four. I'll start with that lemon yellow. Despite the Cotman line being not quite so saturated in pigment as their professional line, 
these colors really do have a lot of vibrancy as you can see it just they're really just such a joy to work with very easy to re-wet very easy to lay the color down so it really gives you a wonderful solid introduction to how fun watercolor can be and i promise you as long as you're using 100 percent cotton paper you won't be frustrated now you can see this Chinese white just really isn't opaque at all. It's great to have in your palette if you wanted to um, bump those other colors into the pastel range. However, if you're looking for opacity, I recommend either a bleed proof white or a white gouache. All right, so there is our, our swatch card from the Winsor Newton Codman set. Beautiful, nice, vibrant colors. Let me get these dry and I will check back in. When you're using these paints, you can go through the complete gamut of watercolor techniques and have success at every turn. The difference that you'll notice between the Cotman line and the professional line uh, is number one, you'll have more color, more pigments in the professional line, but there are 40 in the Cotman line, so honestly, you could mix a, a huge amount. Uh, the light fastness, the Cotman line is a little more, um, I think this light fastness rating is kind of proprietary to Winsor Newton Cotman line. It just has the, the double A or the A rating, which isn't standard with a blue wool scale or anything like that. Um, but what you are going to have is a great place to start your watercolor journey. And if you haven't tried these yet and you're looking for a really decent paint to perform in a sketchbook for you, these are a really great investment. Um, they're not that much money for the price. And like I said, you can get these in a tube format if you prefer. And of course, they come in this 12 half pan set and many other iterations of sets are available. Thanks so much for watching this review, guys. We'll see you next Saturday with another review. Take care.